Hey guys, <clears throat> we're here, me and Rachel, Hi. with Bangs. Rachel has Bangs now. We did it. Crazy. Bangs. Thinking about getting Bangs myself. Look how fancy she looks, like a movie star or something with her Bangs. <sighs> Hope everybody's doing well on this Thursday evening. Feels amazing out there. The weather's been so good uh, the last couple of days. Chad, how'd you and Alyssa shoot on your your little your little getaway? How, how was the golf? Hope it was awesome. Hey, Alyssa. Meredith says your hair looks great. Wow. Not as good as mine, but looks pretty Thank good. You. She said looks pretty good. Got a cut today. She did. She did. I think she looks like a whole different person back there. Chad, you didn't fall in the mud. Oh, it's awesome. That's awesome. Candace, Catherine. Kids Ministry representing. Hope you guys are phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, Alex, go ahead and throw in there why you why you need some prayer. We'll we'll jump on it all together, but uh, have some prayer words on here that'll uh, get right to it. So, hey guys, let's take a moment and uh, just kind of realign and reset ourselves uh, <clears throat> on the kingdom of God, and uh, we want to. Enter his course with praise, enter his course with thanksgiving. That doesn't mean you don't have things that are hard or things that are overwhelming or things that don't make sense, uh, but it does mean uh, that that we are trusting God and putting him in his right place, uh, which is above all uh, and and overall. And so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, all right. So, uh, Alex was at Morgan County. Okay. Well, we're so glad that you're on praying with us. So, let me pray, and then we'll jump in. God, we love you so much, and uh, we are just so grateful uh, that we get the honor and the privilege to pray, uh, that when we pray, you hear us. And um, God, some of us are at home, some of us are at coffee shops, some of us are in great places, some of us are in hard places, uh, but no matter where we are, uh, you love us. No matter where we find ourselves, you have us totally, completely. Um, you're in control. And so, uh, God, we are so grateful that we claim that, and we are just we, we just want to rest it. I pray that right now all of our realities uh, would be shaped first and foremost by your power, by your love, by your grace. And so, God, right now, every single person who's praying uh, right now, we just give things to you. First uh, Peter 5, 7, we cast our cares on you because you love us. And so, God, right now, uh, we choose to believe that not only we choose to believe and receive your love, <clears throat> but not only that, we are receiving that your love is greater than anything else going on, <clears throat> anything else in our life uh, that's attacking us right now, anything else in our life, uh, even good things that are vying for our attention, God. Uh, we we just want to submit and surrender uh, that your love is greater, that your love is greater. Uh, and so, uh, God, we love you. Um, and uh, we, just, we just pray that right now, all of us, right where we are, that we would have a revelation during this prayer time with you, a revelation for ourself or for our family or for the people on here who are humble enough to join for prayer people like alex god and pe people who are who are coming to hear your voice and so god we love you so much we're so grateful and we pray amen amen so hey guys i hope you had an amazing day <clears throat> hope you've had a good week so far uh, again the weather has been amazing uh, but we are thrilled and honored uh, to come before you with some prayer and so uh, hey, remember one of the things that we do each week uh, to one of the things we do each week to uh, our each of our prayer sessions, sorry, uh, to is is we pray God's word. And that just helps us be able to uh, have a place we can go every time and get alignment. And again, God's word, uh, he says in Ephesians six, it is it, it is the sword of the spirit, which is God's word, God's word. And right after that, it tells us. Uh, to always be praying, interceding for God's people. And so uh, God's word is a massive part of, of us doing that. It's a massive part of us being able to pray uh, and to do that. And so, hey, I actually just want to take a second. And uh, if you guys, we were talking about this in our small group last night, but if you have a verse uh, that you're praying on a daily or a semi-regular basis, uh, that's impacting you, that's helping your prayer life, helping your intimacy with God. We just put that in the chats. Uh, we put that in the chat. Uh, what what is it? What what are you? What verse are you praying? Uh, that's just helping you better understand and better appreciate 
uh, God's presence and God's grace or his love or his belief. Is there any verses that you're using right now, babe? Put you on the spot. What am I using? Well, I've been, my verse for the year, which is let your gentleness be before men that uh, they would know the Lord is near. And so one of the things I'm doing to make sure I'm seeing my word played out in my life is praying my verse for the year. Mm, yeah. Which is great, which is great. You may have to look up some of these verses. I, I don't know. I won't know them all off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, I do love James 4.8. Um, you know, draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Chad, what an amazing promise to grab a hold of. And um, and and just in, in our in our quiet time, or sorry, in our group last night, uh, we just realized, hey, some of us don't have verses that we're grabbing onto and praying, using to guide our prayers. And so we'll have Rachel look up some of these and we'll use them. Uh, but just before we do that, just to build the the focus of prayer uh, in my Bible reading, um, today is uh, we're in Luke 19. And if you know Luke 19, it's a, it's a very special verse on prayer. It's actually when Jesus comes into the uh, temple courts uh, and finds people uh, changing or uh, losing focus on what it what the time was supposed to be about. Uh, and actually, uh, just a little part in Luke 19, verses 45 and 46, Jesus says, when Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive those people out who were selling. And in, in 40, verse 46, Jesus says, it is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And so, and we know because of 1 Corinthians, we know that we are, we are, uh, the church, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so if your body should be anything, it should be a, a house of prayer. And so uh, I, I'm, uh, Rachel's pulled up some of these, so we'll, we'll use some of these here in a second. But can we just ask the Lord right now just for, um, and as people put stuff in the comment, please go ahead and pray over it and just intercede for it. But can we just take a moment and ask God to give us more of a heart for prayer? He says, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer. Can we just take a moment and ask the Lord, Lord, give us a passion for prayer. Would you mind doing that, babes? Yeah. Lord, we're so grateful that we get to talk to you, that prayer is not just a time where we bring our grievances or our requests before you, but it's a time of communion. It's a time where we get to hear your voice, and it's a conversation. And Lord, there's no one better to talk to than to you. So, Lord, I just ask right now that you would you'd soften our hearts, that you'd attune our ears to your voice. Lord, we are so grateful for the way you've provided for us up for today. God, the manna we've had for today, the word we had for today. God, um, we don't want to be stingy, and we don't want to um, go for more. God, you said today has enough worries of its own. And so, God, we don't want to be concerned about the future and anxious for anything. But, God, we just come before you grateful that today we get to hear your voice. We get to come in your presence, God. But this just be the longing of our heart to hear from you and to be with you. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. That's right. That's so good. I'm going to have Rachel share one of the verses you guys put in there. I hope we didn't grab the same one. Alyssa and Candace put in there, uh, rejoice always, which that's a short verse that I think we could all memorize and be impacted by. Rejoice always always uh which in the greek there means always um but uh pray without ceasing uh in all circumstances give thanks uh for this is the will of god for you in christ jesus and so we just talked about pray we talked about gratitude or pray for gratitude at the beginning and so what a great verse to come back around to on good days and bad days what a great prayer verse what which one did you look up babe? i love um Isaiah 40, 11, that Kathy put in here. And it says that he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. And he shall gently lead those that are with young. Mm. It's just the, the way God treats his children, the way God loves us, cares for us, provides for us, and not just looks after us on the regular, but even when we're in situations and seasons where we need gentility, God is 
so compassionate and kind in those places. So if you're wondering if God sees you and if he's going to care for you the right way, this is a great verse to speak over. Let's go read the verse one more time for us. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosoms and shall gently lead those that are with young. That's good. And hey, some people have already put things they're praying for in the comments. And if you have things you're praying for, will you just put those in there? But can we just take a moment and pray that people uh, that in our life, uh, but just people in the world, people who don't know Jesus yet, that they would feel God's presence, whether that whether that's uh, in just a spiritual way right there where they are, whether God sends somebody to them. But let's just take a moment and ask that people would feel God's presence and not lies from the enemy. So God, we come before you right now and uh, we just ask just like what it says in there that, that like you, you hold us. God, you care for us. You're right there with us. And so God, would you just please just allow people to feel and experience your love and your grace, God, but also your presence. I, that verse reminds me of, of King David in Psalm 139. No matter where we go, if we're on the heights, God, uh, even there, your hands with us for the depths there also, uh, that's where you are, God, wherever we go, you're going to go, uh, to pursue us because you love us. You want a relationship with us. God, help us to believe your word over what the world has to tell us. God, we all have lies. That the enemy is trying to tell us, uh, God, would you just please help us to believe your word and your promises over those in your name? We pray. Amen. 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 And so, hey, we're gonna we're gonna keep on going through some of these some of these verses, um, and uh, that's awesome. And uh, Aly Alyssa, I want you to see some of these testimonies in here. Um, and uh, God, God is so able. Uh, again, we overcome the enemy by, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so, uh, hey, another verse that was shared in here uh, I thought was so powerful uh, by I believe it was by Pastor Mike is Psalms one verses one through three. And it says, so uh, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinner uh, and sinners or sit at the company of mockers, but who delights in the law of the Lord, who meditates on uh, his law day and night. This person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in season uh, and whose leaves does not wither. Uh, whatever, whatever they do prospers. And uh, I do, I really do, Mike. I think this is such an amazing verse to go back to and a plant into a heart. But hey, I think a, a, a verse uh, that, that's just very similar for this that comes to my mind that I know my mom prays over me because uh, she puts sticky notes of it all over my office whenever she's there. Uh, but is Galatians 6 9 that says, Do not grow weary in doing good. And so I just want to pray for a moment that we wouldn't grow weary. I just feel spiritually. Uh, that this is a season where the enemy is trying to bring stress and weariness and strain and that we would walk in, we would walk in joy. Yeah. Nehemiah 18, the joy of the Lord is our strength. But what, from what Mike, the reason that brings uh, my mind is, you know, when, in, in Psalms 1 verse 3, the person is like a tree planted in the streams of yeah. water, which yields fruit in season and those, uh, and whose leaves does not wither, whatever they do prospers. And Hey, that, that, um, that fruit that we yield should nourish people around us. That fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, that should nourish the world around us. That's what they're looking for. And so you just take a moment, babe, and pray for perseverance that yeah. we wouldn't grow weary. But like what Pastor Mike said, we would be planted uh, like a tree in the water of God's grace and Holy Spirit. Lord, we just ask right now, would you just show us the places in our lives where we have become weary? Mm -hmm. Would you show us in our jobs, in our church, in our relationships? Where have we become weary, Lord? Mm. We choose right now to to deny just for a second what the world would say about our situation, about our circumstance, mm. about uh, we deny what our flesh says of us, about us, what our body might even say. And we just, we just ask spirit of the living God, 
What do you say? Would you just speak to our weary souls, Lord? Would you heal our weary bodies? Right now, we ask for a a fresh wind. God, would you just invigorate us? Would we have such zeal and passion for you that the things that seem hard and overwhelming, they just pale in comparison to your majesty and your might. God, we bring before you the things that have stolen our joy and we take back from the enemy's camp what's been stolen from us. It's our inheritance of a sound mind. God, we choose to walk in that. Our inheritance of joy. Part of that's our job, man. Our joy is our job. It's our it's our job to come before you and to be filled with your presence, to get a fresh perspective, a heavenly perspective. So right now we choose to have the mind of Christ. We choose to have the eyes of Christ. Holy Spirit, would you give us your eyes in the places where our heart has become weary, where our hands have become weary, where our mind is weary. God, we ask that you would replace those things, those places with supernatural things. We ask for supernatural joy, supernatural peace, supernatural endurance. We ask, Lord, that you would give us, that you would just call us up, call up the thing in us that we don't even know exists, that you, that you, when you look at us, it's the thing that's always been there. Just like when you looked at Jeremiah and you called out in him a prophet and he was afraid and timid, but you called out a great prophet in him. It's always there because that's what you created him to be. So God, right now, I just ask that as we submit ourselves to you, that we would experience right now the new creation that we've been made as we're being made into your likeness that right now, God, we would just experience new facets of what it is to walk full of your spirit and to be transformed into your likeness, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't leave us in weariness, that you give us a fresh wind and a fresh mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's so good. And hey, another verse I think would be great uh, for us to pray. And I, I love the heart behind this one. And I believe Kim uh, Miller put this one in. Yeah. Um, in Mark. Oh, I put the wrong verse in there, Kim. I didn't like the verse. I, I put 29 instead of 39, uh, which says, as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I, I, I was just sitting there thinking and praying and I, I will look up the right verse, Kim, instead of my typo. Uh, but, you know, God, God is the one that gives the increase. And so he, he all, Jesus also said in Matthew 9, uh, 37 and 38, 39, that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And so I, I just, I hope we're always praying for the lost, like on a daily basis. And so uh, I was just thinking when I read that ver- the other verse out of Mark, uh, the wrong verse out of Mark, uh, that, um, that, you know, we would be praying that, God would make it ripe because only he can give the increase. Yeah. But as he makes the fruit ripe, that we would be there with a sharp sickle, uh, that our life would be a sharp sickle, that we would be workers in the harvest field. So can we just take a moment and pray for those far from God and not just those far from God, that we would that, that we would uh, be there, uh, that we would be there to love them and care for them and show them God's grace. So let's take a moment and pray for the lost. Uh, and for our focus on them. So God, we come before you right now, and we want to lift up people who are far from you. Uh, I think about Second Peter uh, three nine that you are not slow as some understand slowness, but it's your desire that none would perish without repentance. And God, that's your desire. Uh, I think about again John three sixteen for God, you so love the world that you gave your one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I think about uh, Paul in Romans 9, 1 through 3, that says he is in anguish for his brothers and sisters that are far from him, so much so that he would give up his place. And so, God, right now, I just pray for the lost and the broken, the hurting that are far from you, uh, that right now that you would that you would be a friend to the brokenhearted, that you would be a father to the fatherless, you'd be a healer, the physician to the broken. Uh, but God, that you would send people in their life and around them who would point them to Jesus, that they would, Holy Spirit, right now, you would start working, uh, but that you would confirm your work through the through the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven in believers. Um, as we love on people, the people we know and the people we don't know, 
the people who are like us and the people who are not like us. Uh, that God, it doesn't matter who it is. When we see him at Kroger or at the bank or, or, or just out at the, wherever we may be, uh, God, that we would pursue, we would just make a beeline for him. We say whatever you had to say. We wouldn't worry about the fear of man, but we would pursue him. God, would you give an increase that only you can give? Um, God, and, and we're not, we don't feel responsible for the increase. We're only responsible for the work. Uh, we're only responsible for the obedience. Um, and so that's just what we asked you to help us do. God, we'd be responsible for the obedience. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's, that's right, Pastor Mike, send me. Uh, so the verse that Kim actually put in there was Mark 4, 39. That says, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, be uh, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. I do love that. Gosh, I love that so much, Kim. Uh, just every day. Imagine, again, and what I'm hoping that we're doing right now is if you were to grab five, six of these verses, and you just prayed them every day and apply them every day. Think about the application of this verse. Um, he got up, he rebuked the wind and the waves, said, quiet, be still, and the wind died down. It was completely calm. I have stuff going on in my life. Rachel does too. I'm sure that you do as well. Some things in your life that feel a little overwhelming. Uh, there's some, probably some questions that you don't have answers to. Um, and if we just let the our, our flesh and the world, if that's the only voice we have and we never stop to hear, Jesus got up in the middle of a storm and said, quiet, be still, yeah. and whew, total calm. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think that's just huge. So, um, babe, would you take a moment and pray that we would have the faith to believe something you say all the time, that we would believe that God is who he says he is and he can do what he says. He, we would have faith yeah. that this verse obviously gives Kim uh, even in hard seasons. Yeah. God, we love that your word tells Amen, us that God. faith is a gift and you love to give good gifts to your children. The word says, it tells us that we who are mm. evil, who love to give good gifts to our kids, what kind of a father are you that we would think you wouldn't even do greater? You're holy and you're pure and you love when we come before you and we tell you that we're struggling. God, help my unbelief. I just, your heart, Jesus, the way you interface with that man who is desperate for healing and you, God, you gave them even greater belief. So we just ask right now, Holy Spirit, would you just give us and, and, and birth in us a fresh gift of faith? Right now, we receive it. If you want to, you could posture your hands out in front of you. God, I receive the gift of faith right now. Would you just increase my belief? God, help my unbelief. Would you help me to believe what the word says about you and not what my circumstances might say? God, we, we choose to believe that you can do anything and that we are not responsible. We don't pick up and take on um, your uh, the yoke that you're designed to carry, God, because your yoke for us is easy. And your burden is light. God, we choose to trust you. Trust that you, when you move, it's the right time and it's the right thing. God, we, we don't want to rush your hand or press your hand. We want exactly what it is that you have for us. And so we just receive right now the fresh gift of faith, faith to believe that you are the king of the universe, that you're sovereign, that you're kind, that you're good, that you're pure, that you're present, that you really do rescue, you redeem, you work all things for your glory, that the men around us would see and know that you are the king of the universe. And it's our deep joy to be in relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That's so good. And hey, there, there's just uh, two more that I would love to pray through. And uh, hey, uh, I, I, we are praying. I, I know Allison, um, uh, we're, we're praying for that. Uh, what a great legacy for your dad, for people, uh, to have a relationship with him, uh, at his funeral. What a kingdom mindset there. That's amazing. I know God is so honored, uh, by that request. So God, would you please see people saved, uh, in that moment? That's, that's so, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. And what an honor, uh, as a dad having, uh, Chad and Catherine do. That's just so cool. Generations. That's so cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's very sweet. Um, Hey, uh, one, th this is, and Hey, not all of these verses are easy to pray. 
Okay. Uh, I love one that Pastor Kyle put in there. He put in uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. And, it's, and this is Paul, and he's talking to Timothy, and he says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayer, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, which, again, that sounds easy enough, right? For all people, we gravitate towards the people we know and care about. But then he says, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Now, you know, it's like, oh, well, Paul doesn't understand the tumultuous political times that we live in there's no way that he would tell us to pray if he knew it was trump or biden or you know yada 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 well paul ends up getting his head cut off by government officials yeah. you know like he's living in the season where people get crucified uh for disagreeing and so the humility uh of paul to say hey uh with not don't just pray he's not saying just pray he's saying with petitions prayer intercession thanksgiving be made for all people. And he's saying, mean it, go after it, show it um, uh, for, for kings and those in authority. So uh, for some of us, this may need to start with some humility um, because they're not who you voted for. Um, or maybe your boss isn't your favorite. Uh, some Faith Promise employees are on here, so don't put that in the comments if that's you, okay? Um, but uh, we pray for the people in authority um, and you know, I, yeah, so we, we won't belabor it, uh, but we may need to take a moment and pray for humility, but let's take a moment and pray. Whenever I say people in authority, uh, in your life or around you, who comes to mind? Is it, is it politics? Is it your boss? Is it who, who is it? So let's just take a moment and ask for the humility to pray and love people, even if they don't like, you know, vote like us or think like us or things like that. And let's pray for those in authority. Come on, let's do it together. God, we want to come before you right now. And uh, God, the world has gotten so caustic and, and polarizing and mean uh, when it comes to authority. Uh, God, we don't like to submit. And so authority is just a challenge for us or can be. And so, Father God, right now, we just take a moment and we pray for those in authority. Uh, we pray for, uh, not and not just spiritual authority. God, we did that actually on Monday. So, God, we want to pray uh, for people in like government authority and and uh, and for uh, business authority, uh, we want to pray for business leaders, God, that uh, that you would that that uh, Christian business leaders that you would give them more influence to use that influence to build the kingdom. We pray for people uh, who business leaders who don't who they're far from you, God, right now that you would that you would show them that that it's not that success and finances that that's not what's most important. God, I want to pray for our, our government leaders. Uh, God, instead of, instead of just praying that uh, that uh, that abortion would be different, or that that uh, that uh, that the outlook on on uh, sexuality would be different, God, I pray for uh, a revelation uh, for government officials, for Democratic and Republic uh, Republican officials, God, that they would that right now, God, wherever they are, that they would have a waiter or a waitress or a friend or just you, Holy Spirit, that you would show up and show out. You would let them know you want to have a relationship with them uh, because God, uh, again, the uh, you, when you come back, God, it's, it's not, you, you, you're, you didn't die for a nation, you died for the world. And so God, I just pray that we would honor you. Um, and I, I pray because we'll all be held accountable for what we do and what we don't do on the body, 2 Corinthians 5.10. And so, God, we just pray right now that you would draw people to yourself, people in authority uh, who can who can. And what, what an amazing thing to see people in authority turn to you. Um, God, what a witness that would be. So we do. We pray with petitions. We pray for grace and favor and salvation and freedom and in, in their lives. Please, God, move in a radical way. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, we're, we're about out of time. But uh, hey, just the only, last thing I want just to just to remind us of, and uh, maybe you can do this on your own tonight, or uh, or um, or just make it a part of your routine. A verse I saw a couple times, which is a great verse, and I love this verse, is is Romans twelve two. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world; be transformed by the That's renewing so of your mind. But a lot of times we forget about Romans twelve one. Uh, where Paul says that uh, we're, we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. Uh, and so before we can have Romans 12, 2, we have to have Romans 12, 1. And so I want to encourage you, add, the, add Romans 12, 2 and 1 
uh, to your to your prayer time that you would ask the Lord, Lord, make me a living sacrifice. What in my life do I need to lay down or sacrifice to you? And then transform me. Don't let me be conformed, but transform me by the power um, of, of your mind. And hey, last thing I want to show you, give me that book over there. That I'm reading this book right now. Um, and if you're looking for something to read, unbelievable, unbelievable. It's called The Gap and the Gain. Unbelievable book. Uh, it's, it's a business book. It's not a Christian book. Uh, but what, and, and I know we're out of time, but I just want to tell you, um, I, I was really impacted. In, in, in their study, it actually says the most important hour of your day is the hour before you go to sleep, uh, which is usually a wasted hour. And so I want to encourage, and they, and in, in here, they understand there again, I think one of them's a Christian, but they talk about the importance of gratitude and not wasting that hour. And so I just want to encourage you before you go to bed, uh, but tonight, even if it's five minutes, uh, would you give the last five minutes and then the first five minutes to Jesus, uh, with prayer, with gratitude, with even just, uh, just talking with them. He wants to talk with you. He wants to be, and if you go to bed that way, it's the last thing your mind's going to be on. And then whenever you return back to, I'm telling you, book in your day that way is yeah. you're you're not just going to pray transformation, uh, but you're going to obey and do the things it takes to see so it. So, good. hey, we didn't pray for the weekend, so be praying for the weekend. We're talking about forgiveness. It's going to be unbelievable. It's a make room weekend. So much opportunity for God to transform lives. Uh, oh, Julie, you, you, Julie. Um, all right. Uh, sorry, Julie's our fairy campus. I like to sass her. Hey, guys, we love you all so much. And uh, man, I hope you have an awesome night, awesome weekend. We can't wait to see you this coming weekend. Invite somebody to church. Witness somebody. Invite them. Let's baptize them. I love you. We'll see you soon. Jude.